So I started working at Times Internet. Okay. It was an inter-based, internet-based company. Mm-hmm. For the first time, had lots of real-time data to mm-hmm. see that people actually do read a lot. Like I'm editor, I mm-hmm. give tips. So mm-hmm. editor recommends. Right. To my joy, uh, nobody had taken that handle. Uh-huh. Thank God. So my first post was about this journey from being an engineer okay. to an editor. Okay. I want to make Indian publishing more accessible to yeah. people. So, uh-huh. 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 I can talk about it in English, but I will get out of my Hindi words. I mean, I have a really <laughs> very sweet community. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Book Nerds Podcast. Uh, we have a very special and awesome guest with us today. Uh, her name is Shreya Poonch. Shreya, hi. Welcome to the Book Nerds Podcast. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Great. So, you know, uh, me and Shreya have talked about books in general previously as well, online on Instagram lives. But I'm super excited to talk to you about uh, uh, a lot of things around books. Um, so, first of all, let's dive right in. Uh, you know... Uh, you have been uh, a commissioning editor for a while and you know you have kind of uh, ventured into you know being a freelancer and uh, doing this in a freelance manner as well and becoming a book influencer all of that but tell us about the initial sort of story of you kind of you know uh, venturing out of in some ways the publishing you know uh, the companies uh, you work for penguin and harper and you know after that in some other companies as well but you know now you're on your own uh, tell us a bit about the story of this transition and also about how did you kind of land up here because your background is different right i mean you, you come from a tech background if i'm not wrong so yes, yeah. tell us about right. this the initial story okay so i'll have to start at the very beginning okay uh, main samay hu types yeah uh, <laughs> i was always interested in science yeah that was my core skill mm-hmm. and that was also supplemented by this you know joy i derived from reading mm-hmm. books yeah. uh, specifically novels mm-hmm. now my father said to me when i was when i just had completed mm-hmm. my class 10th that mm-hmm. you know become an engineer it's mm-hmm. easier mm-hmm. it's quicker mm-hmm. and it's also a degree that allows equips you with versatility because mm-hmm. if you can solve euler's theorem yeah you just pretty much everything you've got mm-hmm. handled yeah. i said cool four okay. years is not a bad time mm. i love science any which way mm. and let's see what the, mm. you know the degree has in store mm. unfortunately by my third year i mm. realized that c++ java python were <laughs> not the languages that held my heart or my mind a kaun sa college hai I was a part of Bharatiya Vidya Peet which okay. is a part of IP University Delhi. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I decided that this is not going to be it. Okay. And you know when TCS and Pusses companies mm-hmm. like these were coming for placements mm-hmm. we were also part of this one gathering where they pitched two students why you should join us. Yeah. And I found myself thinking oh god this is not for me. Okay. Um so I sat down on a notepad they had given and did a mm-hmm. SWOT analysis of the skills I have. Yeah. and how can i monetize them okay because like i always say paise bhi to kamane hain sahi baat hai so i fit, realized that my love for books uh, and my u- general inquisitive nature mm. had equipped me enough to know about publishing mm. and this is the direction i could see myself mm. going into okay the next step is how do you enter publishing you're mm. an engineer you mm. have absolutely no credentials to show that mm. you are uh, in any way equipped yeah. to handle the creative world yes So and FYI to anybody who's wanting to get in saying that you were your college like school magazine head is not it. No <laughs> um, kaam nahi karega. Nahi kaam karega. Yeah, yes. Ya meri poem chapi thi class 5 mein <laughs> newspaper mein yes. nahi kaam karega. Yes. Uh so anyway I decided to do utilize my final years in engineering to mm. do internships with magazines. Mm. Uh and I obviously chose tech magazines because mm. it's a good intersection. Right. After this I did a postgraduate diploma in mass comm and journalism mm-hmm. because I figured that if you become a journalist mm-hmm. you've entered the creative space yeah I wanted to become an editor yeah in a newspaper but mm-hmm. that didn't work out mm-hmm. uh, I was apparently a good reporter okay um I wasn't okay um, so, <laughs> so I got you have done the run around there yeah, around yeah, daily yeah, yeah I so have you know daily 
I interned at Mint and I got hired immediately mm-hmm. and that speaks for something right and I then started using LinkedIn and Twitter to connect with people who could give me an understanding of how do you get placed mm. and also because journalism does teach you one thing which is people matter more than mm-hmm. an email or screen yeah. so yeah. coming via reference is always better yeah. and that's what I decided to do mm. people were very kind mm. and helpful I got calls from both penguin and harper collins mm. i chose harper because at that yeah. point i wanted to be mentored by a person who i could see had the patience to teach okay and that's what i found in my first boss and four very happy years there okay penguin, can you can you mention the duration because i really want to get a sense of how long or not so long has it taken for you to kind of be here um i graduated in 2014 okay 2015 i got hired at Harper Collins okay and uh, I left Harper Collins in 2019 okay yeah okay cool anyway what happens after that uh, what happens after that i mean you can find all of this information on my linkedin but I know. it's fun when i tell it but it's it's because you know uh, people who uh, watch the podcast may not necessarily go to your linkedin <laughs> that's fair enough <laughs> fair enough but uh, yeah after that i took a break from publishing okay. primarily because i genuinely believe mm. that if you stay cloistered in this bubble too mm. much mm-hmm. you forget what the real world is all about okay and this stemmed from the knowledge that why are indian books not selling as much mm. as they should mm. why are um, you know how do we make this industry scale okay to the point that we see our US and UK counterparts act mm, mm. and that knowledge can only be sourced when you step away from the bubble mm. outside into a world of readers yeah. who are reading something different mm. you want to understand where mm. are they spending their time because mm. everybody has finite time mm. and how do you if you don't know the psyche of the person and right. how they're ch- choosing to spend their time yeah. you're not going to be able to cater for them yes or improve where they choose to spend their time if you think that you yeah. can do yeah. that So I started working at Times Internet. Okay. It was an internet-based internet-based company. Mm. I for the first time had lots of real-time data to see mm. that people actually do read a lot. Mm. It's just that their interests are so varied. Yeah. Uh and as an editor you're kind of not directly interfacing with the reader. Okay. You're basing it on your own sound judgment and I felt that that this stint at times internet helped me close that gap a little okay. better okay. and then i joined penguin uh-huh. and those were two really good successful years yeah. of publishing for me great. i got some great authors on board and then i after the two year mark i again felt that i was becoming a little too comfortable yes. where i was and yes. i wasn't learning anything new okay and at at that point where you know the audiobook boom mm. had started happening in right. india and yeah. I love books in all formats. Yeah. Kindle, laptop, yeah. you know, physical books. Anything goes. Anything goes. Yeah. Bas padha do. Ha. So I was like, ha, audio mein kaam karna hai. Right. Uh tech seekhna hai mm-hmm. because again you want to understand business better and different right. verticals of content yeah. selling. Yeah. Yeah. And I joined Pocket FM. Okay. Unfortunately, in 3 months I was done with that stint because okay. I was great money. Yeah. Uh, startups are great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In but, terms of that, yeah. Yeah. I toh, matlab, uh, it makes but, sense. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think I could contribute well enough okay. for various differing Happens, reasons. I mean. Yeah. So I yeah. I said bye bye to that. Okay. And uh, I have the privilege to be able to take mm. a break. Mm. But so I took one. And yeah. I decided okay, I'm going yeah. to spend some time yeah. understanding where do I take all this knowledge now and how do I funnel it into something more productive? Yeah. Of course to do with publishing but yeah. maybe something different. Now we come to the awesome part. Yes. Right. The Instagram. And oh. you know uh, I meet 
so many of your uh, followers or community whatever you call them and they all have the same opinion like shreya is amazing you know maybe it comes from a, a place of authenticity you are being quite authentic there and uh, we'll talk about dear ishq of course <laughs> but you know let's not start with that let's okay fair enough <laughs> fair enough right so um uh baat hui ki i stumbled upon your profile haan ji all of a sudden and i was like she's different from the traditional bookstagrammer right she is an editor and she has got pedigree and st- she's talking about books casually and that has never happened mm. because people are i mean they are working from 9 to 5 perhaps and they don't have time time hi nahi hota hai okay. aap instagram to kya hi karoge matlab yeah. to wo wali baat hai uh, but uh, this aha moment let's talk about that because why instagram mm-hmm. and uh, you know what was your core focus like just talk about books i mean of course that's a good uh, way to start but was there more to it or kind of how did it evolve so this was at i think one year into the pandemic and i was genuinely missing speaking to readers okay um and not just mm-hmm. my friends who are avid mm-hmm. readers but people who consume books mm-hmm. who pay money for mm-hmm. things you are so this actually started year one into the pandemic mm-hmm. where i was missing speaking to readers mm-hmm. and of course one speaks to your friends my friends are all avid readers mm-hmm. but there's a certain kind of audience whom you're wanting to publish for mm-hmm. jinse baat nahi ho pa rahi thi because oh. you were ensconced in your house and mm-hmm. what not so i decided to go on reddit okay. and there's several lovely you know subreddits for indian readers mm-hmm. thoda reddit ke bare mein batana padega kyunki sabko nahi pata so reddit is this fantastic I think only text-led social <laughs> media uh, application slash website, जहाँ पे no matter what vague interest you may have, mm. you will have a community who's there to welcome you, mm. answer your questions, uh, right from skincare mm. uh, to books to crypto to how to to philosophy, to, to philosophy how to how to you know send the perfect resignation email oh, to yes. bitching about your workplace. Yeah. There's everything that you सब can, चल रहा है सब चल रहा है और सबके लिए बहुत तादाद में लोग हैं इट्स बेसिकली लाइक माई कॉलोनी बैक इन दून इन सब बातों के बारे में बातें हो बहुत ही बढ़िया एंड द बेस्ट थिंग इज यूर अनोनमस दर अनलेस यू सो चूज टू विश यू नो यू विश टू रिवील यू कैन चूज योर अवतार यू कैन चूज योर अवतार योर योर नेम इज वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू बी So what did you post? What was what was the first post that you? I I only did one post, which okay. was that I am an editor at mm. a big five traditional publishing house, mm. and I would love to know, you know, if there are any questions you have about publishing, mm. and if you have any feedback on the kind of books you're seeing from Indian publishing. Mm. So this was like I think the broad framework of the question I had mm. asked, and that received like some five hundred responses. Wow. Yeah. I had never seen 500 okay in my life like my my personal <laughs> okay. finsta as they now okay. say has barely any people it's just okay. my closest people I hardly yeah. I would never post much yep. um I have this one idiosyncratic behavior where I need to post in threes huh. so all of this led me to not use instagram as much any which okay. way mm. and i'm an editor I'm more mm. comfortable with words so mm. reddit was the safest place i could think of so, yeah. without revealing who i was huh. Now when I saw the vast amount of questions people had mm. and more importantly the kind of misinformation mm. that was reflecting in mm. their questions mm. I thought to myself oh god this needs to be fixed so when I saw the level of unawareness mm. and misinformation that people had regarding specifically the Indian publishing mm. industry mm. is when I thought yaar isko kuch karna chahiye mm. like how can we not answer our readers and aspiring mm. authors mm. and uh, I mean, my personal Instagram was a no-go because mm. I rarely post there. Mm. Uh, it's ridiculous how little I used to punch use. Punch don't post. Yes, punch yes. don't post. Please do not send me follow request. <laughs> I do not accept anybody's request yes. unless I've known you for more than yes. a month. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's how I was like, okay, I'll start a new account. Mm. And how do I? Now I'm an obsessive planner mm-hmm. to the point where it often hinders the action. Mm-hmm. And any good self-help book okay. will tell you that. imperfectionists who do are better than mm-hmm. perfectionists who just mm-hmm. plan mm-hmm. uh so i internalized this message and i thought to myself okay let me plan for at least a month's worth of content mm-hmm. what do i want to do with this handle 
फर्स्ट केम वॉट शुड आई नेम इट लाइक मैं एडिटर हूँ मैं आपको टिप्स रिकमेंड कर रही हूँ तो एडिटर रिकमेंड टू माई जॉय नो बडी है then i decided first i have to obviously introduce myself to the yeah. world yeah. so my first post was about this journey from being an engineer okay. to an editor okay and, and what did you post like your picture or like no what, it was what, just like? a carousel okay okay like text based acha theek then my friend said uh sweetheart you have to <laughs> show your face also <laughs> yes and i said oh shit ah. and tab reels aa chuki thi okay um, to my utter horror and this yes. way so i had to get in front of the camera um and I mean, I'm a decent-looking person, so mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't difficult for me to do yes. that because I also love uh, speaking to Maybe people. Maybe you check the comments; they are complimenting you all the time. They're very sweet. I yes. mean, I have a really <laughs> very sweet community. Um, so yeah, that's how it started. My whole objective, like my mm. north star for this account, mm. was that I want to make Indian publishing more accessible to yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. It's a highly gatekept industry. Yeah. down to the point where you know we also live in certain pin codes only mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this is the case with all sorts of like you know uh, gatekeepers of culture and mm-hmm. culture and opinion makers yeah. it happens across the globe mm-hmm. india is not specific to this mm-hmm. but i wanted to change that just a little in my own small capacity yeah. and uh, that's how the editor recommend started yeah. and i was I still am shocked at the number of people who yeah. have brilliant ideas mm. who are just lacking in mm. you know where do I take them mm. how do I take them yeah because I think uh, there are too many people who are also selling these quick fixes mm-hmm. which I hate mm-hmm. uh and many people have now told me that oh I did buy that XYZ person's course and uh. it was you know i did check out your post on that and yeah. it's quite quite dangerous to be honest because it, there are no quick fix, fixes you have to put in the time yeah i mean there there are never quick fixes always smart yeah. fixes yeah. if you have the right knowledge you can mm. you you know you can save time in doing that research so that's mm. what i hope to save yeah. and uh, that's how it began mm. i don't recommend books enough mm. because i'm very very a territorial about the books i genuinely love and like okay. but i'm trying to break out of that mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. essentially i am very introverted so yes for me like the books i have loved ah. you have to deserve to know because right. they will reveal to you part yes. of me that's very yes sacred to me so that's you know that's great because every creator or you know uh, you may i'm saying creator because across the board yeah you write on linkedin as well everywhere you're there everywhere but uh, it's important to have balance you know kind of you uh, most of the time i mean you have to be organic otherwise nobody will follow you to yeah. it, it shows up right and then of course there is the economy which is there and you have to take care of that as well uh, so uh, tell us a bit about that because you know kind of how do you want to balance it out do you care about it right now or you are just going with it and of course we'll talk about the editor yeah you know uh, after that perhaps Uh, so I'm assuming you're talking about the economics from making this content, like right? yes, yes, off? kind of you know yeah? because you uh, it it has to be kind of balanced out because you know uh, it's tough to kind of just make content and then not get any money out of it. Yeah, it has I to agree. Be it's a lot of work. Yeah. I have always had tremendous respect for everybody who makes content, hmm. whether it's in the form of a book or in hmm. the form of even a really delightful Twitter thread. Mm-hmm. each requires a different kind of commitment to yeah. catering for the reader mm-hmm. so uh, obviously when i started out i wasn't thinking about the mm-hmm. money aspect at yeah. all i was just very excited to have people yeah. uh, talk to me and mm-hmm. follow me mm-hmm. like just those basic yeah. you know yeah. validation metrics yes. then uh, i was approached by this startup called tag mango and yes. they said why don't you start doing workshops yeah i thought that was brilliant and that's a great way to kind of yeah you know, and i'm still being able to deliver something authentic mm, to you without mm. uh endorsing or you know talking about something which i may not never use in my personal oh. life um so that happened and that was a great source of side income mm, for me mm. and i was very appreciative of that yeah. all of that went into uh, various things like I mean, my partner is a big investor and he said invest this money <laughs> and you can use it later to like you know grow yes, your yes. Uh, assets and so you have guidance at home you know in in those yes, terms yes i do i do yeah. i have very good guidance thankfully that would be a great 
you know conversation as well having him as well here and you know kind of understand yeah i mean he has a lot more to say about me than i do because yes. he observes me day in day out yes uh anyway so that those those yeah. workshops were great because again they helped me connect with a lot more people mm. authentically and i respond to almost every dm i get okay uh, i usually take a maximum of 2 to 3 days to get back okay uh but other than that like i is people were organically coming on to those workshops mm. participating yeah. emails were shared yeah. lots of texting yeah. all that happened that was great that's real time feedback and you know yeah you improve also right? yeah i took lots yeah. of feedback yeah. also after every workshop yeah. there was a feedback form that was sent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and people anyway i think started trusting me with giving me feedback to yeah. my face okay and again i would like to reiterate all the people who follow me are so It's kind. quite a gracious community. I have they also, really you know, are. I have I have uh, noticed, and um, I, I also know. think they can't take panga with me because one call and I could <laughs> call up all my friends and say, "Is bande ki kitab?" <laughs> Absolutely no, no, no. not. It's not that. It's But, not that people are you know they don't care about that. Yeah, But it's don't. quite a way. It's quite a good community, and But I, I like I always say, yeah. readers always are just better. Yeah, <laughs> better se yada hai. How to read better? and you know we, uh, there is this big question and uh, uh, you know i i just noticed someone in a bookshop yesterday and they came in and just you know look look they were looking for something very particular okay so nobody has cracked the pattern right i mean nobody uh, knows like how people are reading how to read better what is the process tell us more about that now reading better could mean multiple things for you know what your requirement at that point is mm-hmm. I think the first fundamental is that do you even enjoy reading? Mm. Only then can you hope to be better at it. Mm. Uh, it's almost like you know if you go back to school mm. and you don't enjoy math, you don't even mm. like the idea of math. Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter how many tutors your parents employ for you, mm. you're still going to suck at it. Sahi baat hai. And you will lose organic interest in it. Mm. But if you're someone who's just genuinely curious, mm. who thinks, oh wow, like mm. okay, I may never use the Pythagoras theorem, mm. I may mm. never actually. do any quadratic equation mm. i still think it's wonderful that on the basis of these basic mm. principles you have everything revolving around the world yeah. that allows for at least some little space of you mm. know curiosity and right. blooming and developing uh. it's the same with reading i see most people mm. entering this as a hobby with the wrong intention mm. it's always only to upskill it's always uh. only to retain information yeah. it's always only to you know how do i better myself how do i better myself that annotation yeah <laughs> all of that all of that so getting the, quite mechanical huh? exactly yeah. like do you enjoy a good book hmm. and if you don't all of these are just peripheral you know trends that come and go hmm. to be a really good reader you first have to enjoy the craft hmm. then you start knowing yourself as a reader more and you start okay. picking out books that are better for you hmm. that's the other aspect yeah. pick better books invest time in choosing where you put your money in and where you choose like your book is a companion mm. so it's almost like a mini marriage yes and as Or warren buffet said yeah, yeah. you got to pick them right mm. so invest in finding a good book mm. and for yourself and mm. for your needs mm. and it's absolutely okay to want to be entertained yeah. it's absolutely okay to want to be learning something mm. but don't enter it through just that one focus ki mujhe gyan chahiye तो बुक से चाहिए पीयर प्रेशर भी एक बहुत बड़ी चीज है क्योंकि अब सब वारी को पढ़ रहे हैं तो हम भी वारी को पढ़ रहे हैं इट डजंट वर्क लाइक दैट आपको क्या जरूरत है आपको कुछ नहीं मिल रहा है उससे तो जस्ट पिक अप फिक्शन और समथिंग लाइक या आई आल्सो सी दिस अवर्जन टू फिक्शन थैंक्स टू द लाइक्स ऑफ ऑल दीस डूड ब्रोस ऑन लिंक्डइन एंड ट्विटर एंड एवरीवेयर अ फिक्शन इज नॉट अ वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम द रीजन व्हाई यू सक एट कैप्टिवेटिंग एन ऑडियंस एंड यू सक एट empathy is because mm. you've not bothered to find other people's stories interesting mm. Mm. and you apply those fundas when you're pitching your product to mm. venture capitalists and taking money mm. but you never translate those insights yeah. into the human condition yeah. into your own employees or your mm. people or the people mm. you're creating for mm. and that disconnect is showing in yes a lot of things it is showing actually you so, you're so right uh, and uh, although i had not kind of you know thought about it but uh, since it has cropped up uh, you know came up in this conversation 
what are the advantages of kind of you know reading fiction because a lot of people you know and i know that people are just you know making notes from non fiction right now what about fiction how how does one learn from there can you elaborate because you know it is uh, in the beginning when you pick up books you don't understand like how do i learn or is it like you know uh, can it be more subconscious on a subconscious level so i'll give you my example mm-hmm. so that i can only speak authentically about myself mm-hmm. there's this one book that i've now shown on social media because mm-hmm. it's not available yeah. uh it's called who is silence mm-hmm. it's this set of i think 50 fairy tales mm-hmm. written by a russian author mm-hmm. and uh, that book has taught me everything in life okay how do you treat someone mm-hmm. there's a story in it about who is silence mm. which is i think in about 1000 words mm. it tells a child mm. the importance of silence okay and why it is so important to have some time to yourself mm. where you just think and you think about yourself about mm. what you are feeling yeah it's just that one story I- mm. imagine reading that as a 7 year old mm. instantly i felt like oh this book the story has validated me because mm. i also need silence mm. i can't always be playing i can't always be yeah. learning i can't always yeah. be yeah. you know chit chatting with yes. my parents uh there's another book in that which talks mm. about carrying yourself with grace mm. and it is about this uh, soup tureen mm. which is this big bowl of okay. where you put your soup in yeah uh not used in india as mm-hmm. often but ah. So that soup tureen, because it carries within itself mm. so much mm. volume, mm. it has to be graceful. Okay. <coughs> it can't afford to be clattering like spoons mm. mm-hmm. because it's made of porcelain. It mm. has to be stately. Mm-hmm. And again, this intangible aspect that makes us look mm. up to some people, like oh, yeah. they're charismatic. Oh, they're witty. Oh, yeah. they're so empathetic. Mm-hmm. You know, when you meet them, you get a good vibe. Yeah. You learn all of this from fiction. Yeah. uh no self help book i mean yeah. all respect to dale carnegie <coughs> yes. but uh, <laughs> he may teach you how to form friends but yes. what is friendship is something ah, that fiction will tell you yeah yeah uh, so that's what and i firmly believe again you don't have to learn everything from everything you see sometimes mm-hmm. a joke is just a joke it's not yeah. teaching you anything yes uh sometimes you just have mean, fun with it yeah you have fun with it mm. and your book reading so will guide you what was the last book you had just fun with it no <coughs> Sorry. no no issue okay <laughs> so uh what was the last book that you had fun with you know just you know it's lying right there okay uh, uh the it's manji's mayhem by yes, yes. Sulak great 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 tell us a bit about this one and why why so much of fun that is and you have worked on this also i mean i i came in very late on this okay. only to you know handle the last bit of uh, okay. processes mm-hmm. within the company that's mm-hmm. it I had nothing to do with the commissioning or the editing that was okay. done by my brilliant colleagues mm-hmm. at Penguin. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so this book because I think, and I may get trolled for this, mm-hmm. uh, but who cares? <laughs> I think uh, some Indian authors mm-hmm. overwrite. Okay. Actually, scratch that. A lot of Indian authors overwrite. Okay. Can you give us an example? Because no. you know, no. <laughs> I don't want to name. No, names. just a line, not names. Just a line, maybe an example, like where, how, what does overwriting mean? Because a oh, lot of people don't understand. In, uh, overwriting, in my, uh, in my humble opinion, means mm-hmm. that you are doing too much exposition. Okay. And your dialogues aren't sounding what Indians actually sound like. Acha. Okay. We are not stilted English speakers. Okay. We have a lot of, uh, you know, other languages that creep mm. up. Indianisms that आ के निकल जाती है पता भी नहीं चलता हाँ वहाँ पे हाँ मैं English में बात कर सकती हूँ बहुत बढ़िया पर मेरे हिंदी के words निकलेंगे जहाँ पे भी मेरे को ज़्यादा कुछ express करना हो yes so when you you know Anuja Chauhan did this very well in her books where yes. she brought yeah that lingo that lingo yeah and it's not overdone it's not mm. it's not taking away from the literary quality of her work right but it's adding to it just right just right Even Chetan Bhagat in his initial, uh, I mean, yes, yes, again, yes. books. I mean, there was a reason why totally. they took off because yeah. they represent they represented actually accurately what we sound mm-hmm. like. Yeah, but अब जबरदस्ती बहुत हो रहा है. Exactly. वो मतलब एक काम करते हैं इसमें मतलब गाली डाल देते हैं क्योंकि ना मतलब ये this will sound like Delhi like or something yeah. like that. A stereotypical sort so of. So that's what this one did, right? Okay. Uh, it's a crisp book that mm-hmm. delivers. 
you know, in in apps that, and in businesses that say aha mm. moments, ah. where you're just like, oh, wow. Okay. It delivers it consistently. It's mm. this super fun-packed story, mm. not fun, I mean, violence-packed story yes. about Sevara Manji. Yeah. He's a security guard mm. who somehow, mm. owned in India, yeah. he lands up in this big mess yeah. where he's trying to retrieve a bag of cash Achha. for this one woman who he and wants to bang. Okay. Um, and does. <laughs> And it's got these very subtle, Kudos. well done, subtle nuances <laughs> about caste, about Bombay as a city, ah. um, and you don't. It's not in your face. It's not saying casteism is mm. bad. Mm. You are free to draw those conclusions yourself Achha. as a reader. That's, that's a better way. It's, it's like, obviously a better way. It's a better way. And again, Tanuj has very finely crafted himself out of the story. Mm. You don't see the author there. It is Manji's world, and you are. Yeah. A spectator looking into it. Nice. Um, so that's what I loved about the book after a very long time. Okay. Uh, there was fiction that was a quick read, mm. it delivered on its promise. Mm. And um, I really hope if people don't read it, at least yeah. it comes as a movie. No, you are in a podcast. You are listening and watching. I mean, like, some people just don't read, right? Like, yes, I would still want them to experience the story via a movie yeah. if, it, if possible. Okay. Tell us about some gripes that you have with the entire ecosystem. And you are on a creator also now. Overall, yeah. just some gripes which you have, uh, which you would like to maybe address or you don't like in general. Number one would be these snake oil peddlers or you know, you remember this dialogue from Kal Hona Ho? Uh-huh. Saat Din Ladki In. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes. Uh-huh. Now it's become for books. Yeah. Das Din Bestseller. Uh-huh. Book. Instagram uh, stories may have sponsored. Art Din uh-huh. and Bestseller Out. Uh-huh. Uh, where are they selling? How is it? No proof of... There's no proof. There's no proof. Uh, there's a Nielsen list mm. which calculates and uh, tells, gives out data about how many... Uh-huh books have sold which books have sold right at what price have they sold yeah and it's a pretty expensive service yeah but again thanks to being a part of big publishing houses i had yeah. that resource yeah and i have never once seen any of these people appear on that list and this calculates mm-hmm. the top 500 books sold week yes. on week on week yes and i have data for the last eight years i have never hey, seen them to guess you, yeah. so how are you i mean you could say that you can help give a framework to writing mm-hmm. i understand that i respect that education but, Yes, yeah, that would but be do not make better. claims which don't happen. My second big problem is when mm. people think that Amazon bestseller tag that comes on the le- to- top mm. left mm. Uh, is indicative of anything. It's not. Yeah. It's an algorithm that's just tracking the number of page visits on that particular page yeah. on that window mm. of time. Uh-huh. It also tracks the number of sales. Yes, yeah. but you need only two sales in one hour for it to become a bestseller. Mm. Okay. Depending on the category. Yeah. Again, it's an algorithm. Yes. It's not actually quantifying, it's just, it's optimized for clicks, it's optimized mm. for a certain metric, it's not mm. optimized for sales per se. Mm. Add to cart, so you can make a book yes. go as a bestseller. Yes. So, uh, when people post those screenshots claiming that it's a bestseller huh. and see my student has become uh-huh. bestseller, yes. I just <laughs> guess my goat. <laughs> Got it. That's one of the biggest gripes I have yeah. right now. Great, great. So, you know... Um, you are an Instagrammer now. I mean, of course, you are in the influencer category. Tell us about your feeling about this tag, first of all, an influencer, mm-hmm. book influencer. And how? what is the differentiation? I mean, because no, it's not clear to everybody. There are some bookstagrammers, you know. There are people who are just talking about, say, uh, mindset reading or something like that. Or And then you, you are there who is talking about how to read better, recommending some books as well. What is the differentiator here? Where do you see yourself, you know, kind of being maybe uh, in the future, maybe a couple of years down the line or something like that? Have, have you figured it out is, or you're just going with it? I would like to quote this dialogue from Notting Hill. Okay. I'm just a girl standing in front of my camera. <laughs> you know, I guess. <laughs> that, that's also good. I mean, it's organic, right? It's, it's very a- organic. I'm just doing it for fun, which okay. is why when I feel like I you know, just check out of it. Mm. When I feel like I have nothing of value to say, mm-hmm. I prefer staying quiet. Right. I thankfully am not obligated to create content for just the sake of maintaining 
a follow account or mm-hmm. con- you know because this is not my business yes. yet yes it's also not my source of income yeah. yet mm-hmm. uh i know that i will be required to bring in the kind of discipline that other content creators have yeah. uh to it if i have to take this seriously mm-hmm. luckily i don't right now because i am i have that privilege of you know having savings yes. having a partner having a good family ecosystem where yes. if i need to i can yes. say i need help yes so uh, i'm aware of all of that so mm-hmm. i'm right now enjoying that awesome uh, this figuring out stage yeah um tell us about you did this um collab with jlf right yes. uh the jaipur lit fest that was a penguin and, and jlf yes penguin and jlf how can we forget penguin uh but <laughs> so I, i you know uh what was it like it was about pitching books yes. and you had done this and you talked about this online as well um how did it go how does it work and uh how can new people come in and what happened you know basically okay so it was a very very cool idea mm-hmm. uh that the penguin marketing team and the jlf team came up with mm-hmm. uh, inspired by shark tank yeah or uh, which is that i mean finding young talent or mm-hmm. new talent mm-hmm. not young sorry mm-hmm. new talent is extremely hard yeah. because of the volume of uh proposals that come to the email mm-hmm. ids that publishers mm-hmm. have and what we wanted to do was we wanted to you know make it a paid thing mm-hmm. so that you're serious about sending your okay. entry yeah. you've put in effort mm-hmm. and time obviously you're prohibitively expensive just huh. enough to establish intent they say yeah, it makes sense ha huh. yeah. and uske baad jo response aaya tha mm. uh was amazing so i actually we received 214 entries in 3 wow. weeks yeah. and i read all of them yeah. and i was astounded by i think about 60% of the ideas 60% is a huge number it's a huge yeah. i mean the other 40% i would say again great ideas mm-hmm. just require a bit of you know refashioning of the mm-hmm. language mm-hmm. making it sexy for uh-huh. the reader thoda matlab thoda maybe wo, raw ab bahut raw tha wo aur kuch garbar nahi thi mm-hmm. usme बट वो सिक्सटी परसेंट में से फिर उसको नैरो डाउन करके टॉप फिफ्टीन लाना एंड फिर टॉप फाइव बहुत मजा आया लाइक दिस इज ऑल लाइक फ्रेश रॉ टैलेंट यू हैव योर ओन शार्क टैंक नाउ I mean I am so tempted to like just speak to this cohort of people and tell them But that you, are, you don't seem like a shark there. <laughs> I am actually pretty sharky. Oh you are? Okay. Yes. Okay goodness. I okay. would like to think myself of myself yes. as that but yeah uh, that that's so I tell us who won find won uh, who won by the way and uh, you know Subhi why Tab- they won. Yeah Subhi Tawa won hmm. hers was short a short story collection. Okay. And if you've been following me you will know hmm. I will always say ki short stories Mm. publishers don't take up because mm-hmm. bechna bahut mushkil hai yes uh but despite all of this mm. like we chose subhi's uh, the jury and i we mm-hmm. were part of it mm-hmm. chose subhi's short collection story mm-hmm. because each story was revealing a facet mm-hmm. of uh you know the geography she had set in mm-hmm. to perfection mm-hmm. it wasn't overwritten mm-hmm. again it not too yeah. much exposition uh-huh. it was brief it was crisp you could mm-hmm. get a sense of you know how much thought and craft she had put into mm. uh making this collection work because a short story collection mm. has to have a overarching theme it can't it just be random to. stories it doesn't work then it doesn't work then. it doesn't work so that's and she won because of quite it just came down to the quality of writing and okay also uh everybody has individual per, you know mm. uh likings and dislikes in the writing so the yeah. jury all tended to like hers the best ah. but and i if i'm not wrong uh of all the finalists mm. i think most of them can expect to hear from penguin for right um uh, maybe a book deal that's or amazing. yeah that's amazing we have to talk about talk about this and we discussed it also that we should talk about it yes dear ishq yes you have to address the elephant in the room absolutely you know so dear ishq ke bare mein thoda sa aap bataye sabko pehli baat jinko nahi pata hai और ये हो क्या रहा है और ये जो इंस्टाग्राम पे आप पोस्ट कर रहे हो स्टोरीज में दिस एक्सपीरियंस दैट वी आर गोइंग थ्रू अमेजिंग एक्सपीरियंस यू नो सो टेल अस अबाउट दैट तो डियरिश एक नॉवेल के ऊपर आधारित शो है नॉवेल uh, लिखी गई है रविंदर सिंह द्वारा और mm-hmm. उस नॉवेल का नाम है आई टू नहीं I don't remember It's fine. Book. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I came across this because a friend of mine shared it to mm. me and she said, "Oh my god, like mm. what is this?" Ha. Huh. 
तो मैं जाके ट्रेलर देखे दो ट्रेलर थे हॉट स्टार पे और इट्स बेसिकली अबाउट दिस एडिटर इन अ पब्लिशिंग हाउस एंड एन ऑथर एंड देयर राइवलरी बिकॉज ही रिप्रेजेंट्स पॉपुलर फिक्शन एंड वो सिर्फ साहित्य पढ़ती है ठीक है एंड शीज एन शी इज अ लिटरी एडिटर ओके तो इन दोनों का जो क्लैश है और वट आई वॉज्यूमिंग विल बी लव स्टोरी यस It, it has to be. It has to be. I mean, yeah. otherwise, what? Why? Why would we? The drama. Stuff? Yeah. <laughs> so, in दोनों का you know, जो differing viewpoint to love story है, that mm. is basically the show. नहीं mm-hmm. तो the then comes the you know breakdown that you are doing because uh, you are like breaking down scene wise and yes. you know uh, kind of it it's a series in itself, right? So <laughs> tell us your uh, favorite moment and the one where you were like, oh my god, cringe. वो वाला दो मोमेंट्स तो देखो आई क्रिंज वेरी रेयरली ओके माय प्रॉब्लम इज नॉट क्रिंज आई लव क्रिंज एंड आल्सो हु एम आई टू टेल टेल दैट समथिंग इज क्रिंज और नॉट दैट कम्स इन लेटर क्रिंज अ लॉट एनीवेज बट व्हाट आई लाइक अबाउट द शो इज कि इट्स एक्चुअली फाइनली लाइक मेकिंग पब्लिशिंग मेन स्ट्रीम इन इंडिया वो तुमको पता ही नहीं कि पब्लिशिंग इंडस्ट्री होती क्या है हम सोचते हैं कि किताब आती है जाती है नहीं हम लोगों को ऐसा लगता है कि सबको पता है बट ऐसा है नहीं सो आई लाइक दैट दे हैव ब्रॉट दैट साइड आउट देयर इज टॉक अबाउट लिटरेरी एडिटिंग दिस टॉक अबाउट पॉपुलर फिक्शन एडिटिंग बुक्स में से पैसे कैसे कमाने हैं ये सब बात की है वो आई आई लाइक दैट ऑल्सो लाइक ट्राइंग टू कम्पीट फॉर द सेम ऑथर ऑल दोज आर इंटरेस्टिंग एस्पेक्ट विच हैव एक्चुअली बीन वेल रेप्रेजेंटेड एंड आई हैव सेट दैट ये हुआ है मतलब ये होता है माई प्रॉब्लम इज ए विद द नाइनटीज ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द शो ओके यूज ऑफ स्लो मोशन दार्ट फ्रॉम दोज calls that they have taken the production uh-huh. calls uh-huh. the other problem is of course the fact that the characters are badly written okay uh i don't understand their motivation mm. kuch cases mein jaise ki jo publishing house ka ceo hai ha uh-huh. i mean <laughs> aap kar kya rahe hain sir aap business to chala hi nahi rahe aap sirf <laughs> apni biwi slash publisher ko okay. taane maar rahe hain din bhar acha and yahi kaam hai unka aur ha to aisa real life mein nahi hota ceo yes. actually kaam karte hain ha uh-huh. और वो काफी सारा काम करते हैं यस। आई आई वुड Uh, jumps on the bandwagon yes. final word uh, tell me about who is an effective editor you know uh, a lot of people have pata hi nahi hai logo ki hota kya hai pehli baar to uske bare mein thoda sa so an effective editor is somebody who genuinely considers your work and your writing as something that can be improved for the reader mm-hmm. in the way that you think would serve the reader best mm-hmm. uh an effective editor takes your viewpoint in consideration as well because yeah. they know that you know the reader best right uh they then serve you and the the writing that you have done mm-hmm. to elevate it to a better point okay uh they work in tandem with you mm-hmm. to correct you where needed mm-hmm. to ask questions where they think that the meaning isn't clear yeah and to also give you a perspective from a person who has I'm assuming read mm-hmm. a lot in the genre they're choosing to edit. Right. So those things are very important for an effective mm-hmm. reader. Mm-hmm. You can't just know grammar and call mm-hmm. yourself an editor. Then okay. you are only doing a line edit. Yeah. Which now grammarly and <coughs> other tools can also do. It AI, is the yeah. Yeah. it is how you elevate it for a more mm-hmm. delightful reading experience. Right. By engaging and warring with the text. Okay. Uh, I think that's what makes for an effective yeah. editor. Amazing. Thanks, Shreya, for being on the Book Nerds podcast. Thank and, you so uh, much you for know, having me here. You know, you have kind of, you know, uh, there are so many other questions that I need to ask you, uh, perhaps for season two. But yes. <laughs> you yes. know, uh, we, uh, I feel that you are contributing greatly to the ecosystem, and yeah, you were the kind of the first guest we approached, and thank you for so much for being here. and uh, we look forward to so much more uh, we know that you will reach 1 million followers <laughs> so yeah, best of luck with that uh, okay thanks. so yeah thank you so much thank you so much for having me and thank you to your incredible team for yeah. this wonderful experience this is my first ever 
yeah. podcast recording yeah. and i couldn't have asked for a better you know starting point yeah thank you so much thank you shreya for being on the podcast and little something for you thank and, you this uh, looks lovely hope you find a good place i will it. most and certain i've got something from dune because of course book tours is based out of dune and we have some wonderful uh, rusks which Ooh, uh, uh, dehradun is famous for and elora's of course uh, they, they this is not a sponsorship thing but it's just I good it's just it. damn thank good thank you so much <laughs> thank you so, i yeah. love rusks awesome